Got a Halloween one for you. Featuring my misadventures playing Pokemon Go. Cast. Me. Meet Popsicle. Our antagonist, Matilda. Because Karen is overused, and she seemed like a nod duck. Officer. Self-explanatory. Tis the popo two of them. So. I'm a coffee addict. I know shocker. And as a coffee addict is like to do, this morning I went for a stroll down to the golden arches for a cup of joe. And because walking and doing nothing is boring I decided to play some Pokemon Go while I walked to get that sweet cup of magical bean juice. The walk there was fairly uneventful. A couple people just milling about doing their own thing. Get to McDix and get my sweet ambrosia and step outside. Proceed to whip out my phone and take the long way home to hit a couple stops and enjoy my coffee. I'm walking up to my first and what would turn out to be my last stop and spy R would be antagonist and the semen she decided was a cute pet at the stop sitting at the heater that was in the gazebo built at the stop. I'm a few feet away and it happens. Cue Pokemon battle music. A wild shinny Mistrevis appears. To be fair I had a lucky egg going. I load that sucker up with a berry and throw a great ball at it. I catch it, and in my drowsy excitement I should an exuberant f yeah. This draws the ire of our antagonist. Matilda, hey don't swear there are children around. Reasonable reaction I guess I accept I'm in the wrong there I did no crotch goblin was near yet I still swore. My bad. Kid was like 6 so meh. I'll just head out. Me. Oh sorry miss I got a little too excited won't happen again. I'm just passing by, so I'll be out of your hair soon. Matilda, good. What on earth would make you swear around a child? Me, I'm playing Pokemon on my coffee run and just caught a shiny ghost I've been hunting. I got a little too excited about it and got carried away. My brain is still at the bottom of my cup. Matilda, well you own my son something for what you did give him that Pokemon now. I'm going to assume a bunch of you know how that game works with trading. But for non-nerds here's a TLDR. I can't give her spawn a rare Pokemon without us playing together 4 way, to long for a 28 year old man, to be chilling with a 6 year old, me, yeah that's not going to happen. Matilda resisting the urge, to ask for my manager, excuse me, me, not going to happen. I'm not giving your son anything, not just that I can't. Matilda, what do you mean you're not giving my son anything, me, exactly what I said. Im, she finally mega evolves to a full blown Karen. Matilda, you will give my son that terrifying Pokemon now you piece of crap or I will call the police and charge you with harassment. Me pointing at the camera in the park that watches the bum sleep in the gazebo. Go ahead. In true entitled fashion she actually calls the police on me. I haven't even gotten within 5 meters of this woman and I know the camera has seen it all. Including my happy dance at catching that little crap. Spoiler I can't dance. The RCMP show up and of course Matilda instantly flies off the handle and starts spewing vitriol at them about how I'm basically Hitler. Seriously she made me out to be a wandering pedo and serial rapist in the same breath. I'm just leaning against a fence looking bored and annoyed throwing balls at passing ghastly sipping my coffee. Karmas can be despite my annoyance only because of the coffee. The officer approached me and asked me what happened. Me, I was on my morning coffee run and played some Pokemon Go on the way there. I caught something I've been hunting for a while and got excited and swore within earshot of her and her son. I hold up my phone displaying my new trophy. Officer, did you ever approach that woman? Sh saying you tried to touch her son. Me, I haven't even been within a few meters of her. Check the camera. I've been here listening to her screaming at me because I accidentally said F near a child and would do as she demands and give her child a rare Pokemon by way of apology. Matilda hears the word camera and goes white. Evidently she missed me pointing right at it. She tried backpedaling really fast while the other officer is off checking the footage in his cruiser. He returns with his cuffs out. Not for me though for her. They ask me if I wish to press charges. I told them yes. She was booked for filing a false police report, lying to an officer, and I'm not sure what else I'll find out later I'll update when I get more information. TL, doctor at bottom, mobile warning ahead. So anyways this happened about one week ago, and I'm still mad. Cast, ep, entitled parent, ek, entitled kid, 7 or 8, me, I wonder who, 16, f. 
friend, 16, fm, friend's mom. So I was over at my f backslash back quote s house, I have brought my Zbox over as he doesn't own one. We started playing Minecraft on his TV upstairs. We had probably been playing for around half an hour, when X starts pounding on the door. M, Ek, and FM had been talking downstairs for about 10 minutes. I get up to go see who is slamming on the door, and Ek is standing there about to slam on it more. Conversation. Me, what do you want? Ek, imbu award. Me, so. Ek, let me play with you guys. Me, no. Friend, no. Ek, why I I I I I I? Me, because me and friend are playing at the moment. Ek, fine. Not even 10 seconds later. M, why the F can't my Ek play with you? Me, because me and friend are playing. M, well then if you won't, let him play with you, then he will play alone. Me, okay. Good. Backslash M starts walking over to the Zbox backslash. Me, what are you doing? M, taking my X B O X with us, we're leaving. Me, that's my Zbox though. M, no, it's mine. Me, okay, I mean if you want to pay the $250 sign as it worth, go ahead take it. M, you're lying it's not worth $350 sign S, it can't be worth more than $25 sign S. F, should I go get my mom or? Me, yay. FM and F come back up backslash. FM, M what are you doing? M, taking my XBOX home. FM, that's not yours box. M, yes it is. FM, put it back, or I'll call the police. M, you old backslash back quote t dare. FM grabs phone, and pretends to call the cops backslash. M, ek let's go, we're leaving. Backslash M and ek are gone in 5 minutes, without this box backslash. Me, thanks FM. FM, no issue, I don't think I will be talking with her anymore. This is the first time something this major has happened at our school. I wasn't there, but a class discussion led me to believe that this is what happened. Background. Two kids in grade 6 had a massive rivalry. Their families were getting fed up with one another and decided to take matters into their own hands. Both kids are very entitled and are very snotty with each other. So they arrived yesterday after school and here's what supposedly happened. The two mothers began using foul language against each other. It escalated into a physical fight between them, and then the father stepped in, and eventually aunts, uncles, and grandparents. They were all physically fighting and screaming at each other in the front office. A few kids gathered around them, and then it turned into a massive crowd. Now here's where crap hit the fan. One of the dads had a gun. He pulled it out on the opposite family, and everybody began running in all directions. Some kids sit in nearby classes, others who were on their way to the front office ran back from where they came from, and the rest ran off school premises. Police were called, and both families were apprehended. Those involved are receiving counseling, mostly the younger children. There are still some rumors going around about it. One mother was pregnant, they shot the ground staff, all this bullcrap. But anyway, I'm not sure if this really belongs here or not. Let me know, and redirect me to somewhere where I'm able to post it. Thank you. At the beginning of his senior year in high school my youngest son brought home a stray kid. He quietly took me aside, and asked if this boy could stay at our house. He said that the poor kid was scared of his parents, and needed somewhere to stay, while he tried to graduate from high school. This was a bit different than bringing home a stray kitten. I of course, started asking questions. The first of which was what was the kid's name. I recognized the last name though, and was hoping in the depths of my soul, that his mother wasn't who I thought it was, because this gal was bonkers. A vicious pounding on the front door just a few minutes later confirmed my fears. There was a bonkers lady on my porch. With her were two cops. She immediately started screeching that I had kidnapped her son. To this day I have been unable to find out how she knew her poor son was at my house. The boys hadn't told anyone they were coming here for fear of this happening and this was way before cell phones were common. I stepped outside and stood with my arms crossed, waiting for her to stop screaming. While waiting I looked over the two cops that were with her. I could see right away that one of them was going to be a problem because of the way he was frowning. The other one just looked embarrassed. 
Then she stopped screaming to take a breath and I started talking. How old is your son? I asked. She looked at me and screamed that it was none of my business. I told her that it was my business as well as the police's business because no one could move forward until this information was brought forth. The cop that looked like he would be a problem started frowning harder at me. I asked him if I was right and he said that and I kid you not. God is above worldly laws. Who boy. This was gonna suck. You see, this woman was freaky crazy about the Pentecostal church. You know, the kind where dancing around with snakes and falling to the floor while jabbering is not only expected but encouraged. I now had two such folks on my porch in the form of a cop and an M. This was gonna be one ridiculous hassle. I really hated hassles, especially stupid ones. I stuck my head in the door of my house and asked the kid how old he was. When he told me he was 17 his mother once again started screaming. He is lying. He is only 16 and I demand that he come out of there now. I guess you can lie if you're holy. She lunged for the door but I was a bit faster and locked it before I pulled it shut. She shoved me out of the way and began to frantically shriek and pound on the door. I began to wonder if she was gonna break my door knob because of the way she was attacking it. This was when the embarrassed cop ordered her to stop. This crazy woman would have charged into my house if I hadn't locked the door. The frowning cop told me to get the kid. I told him that 17 was a legal age in this state for situations like this and he didn't have to come out for anyone. I knew this because I had grown up in an abusive home and I had left at 17. There was no way I was going to hand over a kid to someone acting like this if I didn't have to. The woman started screaming again, but this time she was screaming something about her having it on good authority that my husband was a pot dealer. This was funny because in all the years I had been with my hubby he had never even tried pot. He thinks smoking anything is stupid, I have no clue where this came from. In fact I was more likely to have pot than my hubby. But I knew a warrant would be needed for this kind of crap and the frowning cop didn't react to this, just kept on frowning. He knew I was right. I stood and listened to the screeching and now there were tears mixed in for a few more seconds. I wanted to see if she would calm down and behave normally. When she didn't I told them to leave and I went inside. I had to go around to the back door because I didn't have my keys on me. She continued to freak out with huge brain sobs, but the cops made her leave with them. The poor kid was barely keeping back tears and was super embarrassed. He told me how she would make him pray out loud for hours, how she refused to let anyone but church kids be his friends, how she would come into his room and tear it all up looking for drugs, and every night she would say grace for so long the food got cold. He said she would go into fits of rage if she found anything she deemed of the devil in his possession, and this was pretty much everything. He said he hated her church and hated the weirdos there and just plain couldn't take it anymore. When I asked if his father condoned this, he told me his dad never ever said anything out loud unless it was in the form of prayer. We took the kid in. My older son had moved out for college a few months before, so I had a spare bedroom already set up for a teenager. Easy peasy. Then came the weekend. This crazy M and about 10 folks from her church, including the frowning cop, but not in uniform this time, came to my house and loudly prayed at it. They were careful to stay in the street, but it was still so dorky that it was almost comical. It was then that I had a great idea. I got a bag of chips and a bottle of soda, set up a lawn chair in my driveway, and sat and watched them pray at me. I watched them in the same way one would watch a movie. I would look at each of them, none would look me in the eye, because I was evil, while they took turns praying loudly at my house. I just sat there, munching chips and drinking my soda. This must have disturbed them, because they only kept it up for about 45 minutes. Then they all piled into a van. After telling me they would pray for me, I never said a word, but I did salute them when they were leaving. They did this every weekend for months. They must have hated the cold though, because if it was too cold or snowing they didn't show up. I would set up my lawn chair every time. Sometimes I would up the game and have a beer instead of a soda. This made them pray louder, lol. If I were to write down everything they did while that boy was staying at our house it would turn into a novel. This M tried everything she could to get me into trouble, but I managed to steer clear. 
This kid stayed with us for over a year and a half while he worked and saved up money. He made friends, went on dates and really opened up. He became a normal teenager despite his goofy mom and her weird church. He would hang out with my son and hubby and he became a happy kid. He then applied for and got a job teaching English in Japan and I was really sad to see him go. He was a really good boy and we enjoyed having him with us. Four days after the kid left for Japan, his crazy M came over to tell me that God had listened to her prayers and now her baby was out of our den of depravity. I only shrugged when she told me this. Whatever lets you sleep at night M. Whatever lets you sleep. Thank you for watching. Slap that like button and comment your opinion on these stories below. I'm waiting. Write that comment. Seriously. Have you written it yet? If you don't comment, you make a bunny cry somewhere. You're not that kind of person, I know. Anyways, peace out, and catch you tomorrow.